about your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Um, so tell me about where you grew up. For sure. Um, I grew up in South Florida. Um, I was born in Cuba and oh, wow. uh, my, yeah, I was born in Cuba. My, my dad, uh, and honestly, my dad's entire side of the family, they were all musicians. Um, and my dad started touring when he was really young. Uh, he's a, a pianist and he, you know, he, he started touring probably when he was like 16, 17. And uh, they got to a point where he needed to basically like leave Cuba to be able to, you know, further his career in, in a sense. And so uh, I had just been born, this was like 1991 and we moved to Dominican Republic. We lived there for like five years and then we moved to South Florida to wow. uh, a town called Coral Springs. So that's where I grew up basically. And that's where I am right now oh, in Coral awesome. Springs, Florida. What yeah. a journey, man. I know, because I was going to ask, if you were born in Cuba, that was kind of a weird time here in the States as far as, like, letting people over. It was just, like, a yeah. bizarre, a bizarre time. So that's interesting that you went to the Dominican Republic and then came to the United States. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, and, and I don't think, obviously, I don't think it would have been possible if not for, you know, my dad's work and being a musician. And, and basically, he had... Uh, American jazz artists basically like petition the Cuban government to allow him to leave to be able to tour with them really? and to be able to work outside. Yeah. So Whoa. So that's how yeah, that's how we were able to get out. But but yeah, and then settled in South Florida and, and grew up and went to school down here and went to college in Florida and but yeah. So South Florida, Coral Springs, Florida. That's cool. That's really cool. Well, wow, man. Um so your dad's a musician, obviously. So you got, I'm sure he's kind of an influence on how you got into music as well. Yeah, but I don't think it was necessarily as, as, you know, as over the head as some people might think that, you know, having a, a father who's a musician and there being any sort of like, you know, pressure, it was just very normalized. You know, mm -hmm. my dad just being a musician and constantly playing music in the house and the idea of music as a life and as a career was just a normal thing for me, you know, and mm -hmm. I think I have a brother and a sister and neither of them are necessarily musicians. My brother's a designer and screenwriter. My sister uh, dances and is an actor, but they don't play instruments or, or are pursuing a career in music. So it's not like we were ever pressured in any way. It was just sure. personally, I always gravitated towards music and it wasn't even like my dad I mean my dad's a jazz pianist and my first you know love in music was like you know I grew up in Coral Springs so it was like Newfound Glory it was like <laughs> oh, the local yeah. legends and yeah, uh I love Newfound Glory <laughs> yeah I actually I listened to the episode with Cyrus oh, which cool. was like amazing hearing him talk about Coral Springs and I got like really emotional because he talked about you know he they had done this tour with uh like Finch and something corporate mm -hmm. and i went to that show down here and that was like my first time hearing something corporate and i was like wait that's like really cool he's playing the piano while you know right. in a, like in a rock yeah. band and there's yeah, these amazing. like yeah yeah and that kind of led me down this whole rabbit hole and that's honestly like that's i feel like most of my journey through music is just littered with these rabbit holes of like very <laughs> random but like deep deep obsessions with different types of music wow that's awesome. with that being the first yeah, yeah that's really awesome yeah i mean yeah he was so cool and i loved his backdrop man he's like standing in front of like every like so many tour posters from newfound glory <laughs> yeah like, whoa so yeah that was really dope that's super cool and I've, I've had andrew mcmahon on the show as well who who is and that was pre-covid when we could actually like hang out with him so he's yeah. just such a nice guy one of the one of the nicest people you will ever meet so that's really yeah awesome. yeah i listened to that episode as well i'm telling you i'm a fan of the show i really appreciate that dude that's so cool so how did what what did you first learn how to play what was your first instrument so i first learned how to play drums and so that was kind of what i like, gravitated to at first and and you know, being a huge Newfound Glory fan, I was like into like 
I wanted to be just like Cyrus at the time, sure. you know, and I was like in these little garage bands when I was in middle school and uh, that, you know, they were like kind of pop punk at first and then they became these like screamo bands and like hardcore bands. And, and so that was like, I was just like obsessed with the drums at the time. And when I got to high school, my, you know, I wasn't like, I think my friends just got tired of being in bands because it just like they weren't really ever passionate about it. It was just something that we did on the weekends. Sure. So I needed a way to kind of, you know, exercise that and, and be able to play in a group setting instead of just like in my room by myself. Mm -hmm. So I joined the uh, the marching band and oh, the okay. jazz band and like as many different like school bands as I could. Um, and that was really kind of that kind of changed my trajectory because through the the school bands i became obsessed with like jazz music through the jazz band you know and um and that was funny because at, at that point I, I came you know to my dad and i was like hey dad i like jazz now and he's just like <laughs> finally <laughs> what do you want to know you know that's awesome <laughs> um that was probably a really and, big moment for him yeah and it was cool because we had you know we were we were finally speaking the same language because he i mean he always would share music with me um but you know i was it, maybe necessarily at the time it wasn't what i was into but as i got older our our tastes kind of like merged you know mm -hmm. that's cool. um yeah so once you started getting into jazz and playing in in jazz band and, and marching band did did that lead to any other band or is that where you kind of started uh you know producing stuff on your own well that's kind of what at that point i in my head i was set that i was that was going to be my career was jazz drummer you know okay. i became i fell passionately in love with jazz and i started studying um different drummers like you know, Al Foster, who played a lot with uh, Joe Henderson, and Brian Blade, who was uh, playing with Joshua Redman at the time. And I was just obsessed with jazz as an art form. And I had it in my head that I was going to be a jazz drummer. And so I applied to uh, Florida State's music school oh, wow. uh, for their jazz program. And this was my senior year of high school. And I was just like, I was ready to start the beginning of the rest of my life, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got denied from the music school uh -huh. <laughs> and <laughs> which like, whatever, like I, looking back, I just, like, I wasn't good enough. I, I completely understand their decision because when I eventually, you know, as I got older and I saw like what these cats were doing in music school, I was like, oh yeah, no, I, I cannot hang with them at all. Like, really? it was, yeah, it was probably for the best that, it was for the best that I ended up not, you know, going down that path. But at the time I was pretty devastated and I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe music isn't, maybe drums isn't for me. Like, I don't know why it, I had such a strong reaction to that, to that, uh, that failure, you know, quote unquote, mm -hmm. but it kind of just like deviated everything for me where I, I didn't know what I was going to do at that point. It was just like, well, okay. I, it was a weird wake up call where I felt like, okay, I'm not good enough to get into music school. So maybe like I should look into other things. Like maybe I should study something else. Sure. Um, and for a while I like majored in psychology and, you know, I ended up going to Florida state just not for music and uh, in the dorms, just to, to kind of scratch that itch, I started playing with garage band and like started making beats garage band because i still loved music i mean i was still extremely passionate about making music and the the process of the creative process behind making music um and obviously i couldn't play drums anymore i didn't have a drum set in my in my dorm room i didn't have access to a drum set so i started producing you know on my laptop wow. in my dorm room and that another rabbit hole you know i started getting into beat making and like i discovered dilla stuff. okay yeah i just i like discovered dilla stuff i discovered like you know ninth wonder and all these different producers that were taking this music that i loved which was jazz uh -huh. and they were making something completely different with it and that to me 
sparks something else this the sense of creation you know beyond just performance or you know playing the music this the the act of actually making the music i realized how much i loved you know yeah so that, that that's amazing so do you you get to you're in college you're you said you're, you're studying psychology or something like that. yeah yeah it's like yeah i went for communications it's always just like yeah i'll choose a random thing and and yeah. that, that's it right there but um so so you're you're in college you're you're working on garage band and do you like like, are you putting these songs and these beats up like on SoundCloud? Like, how do you start getting your, like, how did you start getting the career kind of going? Yeah, I mean, I didn't even think about that because in my head I was still, I, I still didn't view it as, you know, something that I wanted to do for as a career. It was just, at that point I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a psychologist and, but I, I'm just gonna like make music on the side. Mm -hmm. And I was working at the, the Florida State uh, football team, like pro shop, like where they sell like jerseys and whatnot, just like uh -huh. as a part time job. And uh, a co worker of mine showed me that like he had like a he had a rap group that him and his his buddy were in. And he was like, yeah, man, you know, like we're just missing. We we need a producer. You know, we don't like we need someone to make us beats. Like we can't like just keep using these the stock beats that we're finding on youtube like we want someone to like in-house produce for us and i was like well you know i i, I can try <laughs> and um and i showed him some stuff he's like wow this is crazy it really wasn't good at the time at all like looking back i i'm so grateful for them to like gas me up that way because i <laughs> if i would have heard those beats i would have been like yeah man i i think we're good you know actually <laughs> yeah on second thought you know <laughs> let me know if you know anyone right right, right, right. <laughs> but um but that was the first time i kind of collaborated with anyone and took it seriously enough to share my music with anyone mm -hmm. and uh i think after a couple years i think maybe my junior year of uh, college uh soundcloud became really like really popular and really big and I started putting my music on SoundCloud just as a way to almost like a resume of sorts, you know, like mm -hmm. a portfolio where I could send someone my SoundCloud link and be like, hey, check, this is like my style. This is what I can make. And uh, and that, yeah, and I think that was maybe the first time I shared anything. It's just junior year of college on SoundCloud. Wow. And, uh, and I still didn't, I mean, it still felt so far-fetched that I would, consider that you know a career because i mean i was a year away from graduating you know with this like, psychology degree psychology and degree, yeah. and which was fine like it was cool i i enjoyed it but it wasn't until my senior year that i had a friend uh ask me if i wanted to be in his band because he had heard like the soundcloud stuff and you know like just through talking he I told him that I had played drums, you know, in high school and I was like, yeah, well, I have this band and we're looking for a drummer because we're starting to do some shows around town. Do you want to, you want to be in the band? And it was a band called After the Smoke and they were, they were big in, in Tallahassee, Florida at the time. They were kind of these uh, alternative hip hop. It was like an alternative hip hop group that would take like rock and mix it in with hip hop and it was really cool at the time. Felt really fresh, and I, I was like, "Yeah, sure, I, I, I would love yeah. to play some drums for y'all." Um, one of the guys that I was playing with ended up moving away from Tallahassee, and he moved to New York. Um, my buddy named Rufat, and he was like, "Hey, man, if you ever need a place to crash in New York, let me know. Like, I'm gonna try to make, you know, I'm gonna try to just make the music thing work for me out there." Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll let you know. <laughs> I, I'll find out there, man." Yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And but uh, you know, I played drums for After the Smoke for a little while, and it still felt like very, very casual to me. And then after I graduated, I remember the summer after I graduated college, I came back home. I didn't really want to go to grad school for psychology. I, I felt this, this void of like, 
I don't, I don't know what I want to do. I know what I enjoy doing. I, I know I enjoy making music. I know I love and I have a passion for it, producing and for playing, but I don't, I don't know how to put all of that together. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do at this point in my life. It just so happened that my buddy Rupat ended up calling me and said, hey, my roommate just moved out. Do you want to move in? And then, like, I have a place in Brooklyn. Do you want to just come like live in New York? Wow. And and it was so spur of the moment. Within a week, I like packed my stuff and moved to New York. And I think when I got there, it was almost like, okay, well, I have to make something work out while I'm here. And like, mm-hmm. why not just like try this? Why not try to make music a career at this point? Because I don't really feel passionate about anything else. I don't love anything the same way that I love making music and and it just nothing else felt I didn't feel this higher calling for anything else in the world and so I figured why not mm-hmm. um and so I did I moved to New York and just through my friend Rufat I ended up meeting other artists in the New York scene and I started meeting people telling them that oh, yeah, I, I make music I produce here and there and uh, we had our uh, one of our like cross the street neighbors were uh, a group called Chargo and I met them through my friend Rufat and they were like yeah we're looking for a music director someone to help us put our live show together and at the time I was like well I, I can play drums I uh, play a little bit of keys I know how to produce maybe like why don't I I'm your I guy. give this a shot <laughs> yeah, yeah right right <laughs> and it, it was so nerve-wracking it was just like the the most extreme case of imposter syndrome at the time because it was just like what am I doing like this is I'm I'm absolutely just winging it every okay. single like minute that passed I was just like oh they're gonna they're gonna figure it out they're gonna figure out that I'm just <laughs> they're gonna find out that I'm yeah. not a musician here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> even though yeah. you like totally are <laughs> <laughs> and and but that that is a good point I mean I think that I I always had that reference point of my dad and him being such an incredible musician and you know seeing what it actually looked like to be a professional musician and and mm-hmm. feeling like oh that's i am nowhere near that so there's no way that i can consider myself a uh, an artist a musician a professional musician um i think that's just part of the growing pain you know sure. just coming to terms with maybe your version of what being a musician is you know mm-hmm. or what your version of being an artist is so and that was kind of it. it it almost felt accidental the way that I started working with Chargo and I started and then I through those gigs I started meeting people just in either in sessions or at shows and they'd be like oh yeah like I saw what you did with Chargo like you know I would love for you to help me out with my show or produce some stuff for me and that's kind of how it snowballed um and it was very slow it it you know we're talking I moved to New York in 2013 and maybe 2016 I was still figuring out I think by the end of 2016 was when I decided I'm gonna be an artist (laughs) you know oh okay Uh, yeah but it yeah, always prior to that, you were just working for other people and just kind of uh, what producing and kind of helping yeah. other people on their projects. Yeah. What made you decide, and, you know what, this is I need to do something for myself here. Well, because I. Well, I think two reasons, I think I envied the. The fulfillment that I would see artists get out of performing their music and you know, seeing their ideas through from an idea to execution and like putting out a song that they had, you know, recorded and worked on. And, and I, I envied that. I envied the, the, the process of seeing, you know, someone create something that's their own. And, and for so long I was helping other people get from point A to point B, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was always through the filter of what, you know, someone else wanted. And, Uh, If I was working on a song with an artist and maybe I had some ideas, I I always had to filter those ideas through what the artist ultimately wanted Mm -hmm. for their, for their music, because it is their music. And so I, I, I felt a yearning for that, a yearning for 
you know, expressing myself like with like completely through my own uh, means, you know, and, and just kind of sharing my ideas as they are without the filter of maybe someone else. And so that was one reason. And then the second reason was I, I started feeling like, you know, I think I started feeling like I was uh, building towards something. You know, every project I had, it, I would learn a new skill set. So um, the first project with, with Chargo, I learned basically how to music, uh, music direct and mm -hmm. take someone's music and translate it to, to the stage. Um, then another project I worked on, I, I had to learn basically how to play keys because I was kind of their one man band. Mm -hmm. And I was playing some like electric drums and whatnot, but I was also playing some keys on some songs. So I, I learned how to play keys and learn how to, you know, uh, learn like how to use synthesizers and, and analog gear and whatnot, just through that experience. Uh, then I was, then I learned how to engineer and, and record music for people just through working on projects with, with other artists. And I, and I realized I was gaining all of these different skills, um, and I want to just kind of like put it all together and see what I could do with all of these newfound skills. And I, and I realized that the next challenge to the next kind of uh, thing that I could tackle was uh, like, I don't know, sing, you know, and record mm -hmm. myself and, and, sure. and song, right? Like these were all things that I saw as, uh, you know, skills that I had yet to, to attain. Acquire, and I yeah. thought, yeah. And so that, and it felt like the, the most direct way to attain those skills was to write my own music and sing my own songs. And, and I think that's how it happened. Again, it was like a very slow build. It wasn't like, there wasn't one day where I was just like, I want to be an artist because, you know, I want to be out front. Right. And, you know, <laughs> it, it wasn't like that. It was almost sure. like, you know, very slowly I started realizing that, you know, I'm, Maybe I had something I wanted to say through uh, my songwriting and it felt weird having someone else sing it. So I had to sing it myself. I was like, well, I guess this is my song now and mm -hmm. I should put it out as my song. So yeah, it was a combination of all of those things that kind of led to me making that decision to release my own music as myself, you know? Sure. And was that the first record you put out? Was that the Doe CP? Yeah. Okay. And even the, yeah, and even the Dosi P was still, I was, you know, I wasn't ready to take the full punch because I don't think I, I sang on the Dosi P at all. I, yeah, it looks like you have all... a lot of di di featured singers, um, except for two of the songs that I think are just uh, instrumental. Right. Yeah, and I think that was still, I think with Dose, I think I have a song with Madison McFerrin on there. That was one of my frequent collaborators. I was helping produce some of her music. Mm -hmm. And I think... It, it was one of those cases where it was like, well, I, you know, would you want to sing on some of my stuff too? I'm working on this project. But even with Dose, I don't really see it as, as you know, what uh, Soft Glass is today. You know, that was still very much, I was still experimenting with different production styles and, and very much still using a lot of, like kind of leaning on a lot of my collaborators at the time, you know. Did you feel uh, that same way about the about late bloom as well, or wh when when do you feel like you really broke through as as soft glasses like your own art you know project? Yeah, I think I think late bloom was that first step. I think late bloom okay. was the first time that I felt like I was putting out the music that I wanted to put out. You know, mm -hmm. and even I mean late bloom is still filled with collaboration and and you know featured singers, but. Uh, I think Late Bloom was the first time I wrote a song. Um, I think Latency off of Late Bloom. I, I, I co-wrote that song with uh, Tiffany Stocking Gia. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I like wrote lyrics to a song for one of my own songs. And that felt really cool. I was like, oh, wow, I kind of want to do this some more. You know? Sure. Um, but I, I do, I think that Orange Earth was the first project that I feel like you know, was, it was the first project that I felt represented me as 
not just a producer or as a engineer or songwriter, but the first project that, that represented me as a person, you mm -hmm. know, as a person mm -hmm. through the music. Uh, it was really, it was a really personal album. I felt like I had something to say with that album. And I think that's the album that cemented for me, like, okay, I, I think this is what I want to do mm -hmm. forever. Sure. You know? I mean, you had a huge, your biggest hit on, on Spotify was off that record and it was the song that you sang. I mean, that kind of says something, right? Yeah, and it felt weird. I felt like I was, you know, <laughs> kind of, I still felt like I was kind of duping people. I'm like, oh man, I don't know. If, <laughs> do I deserve, you know, to, to have like, you know, something do well right now? Am I am I good enough for that yet? And, uh, but you know, I don't know, I think, I think if, it felt really great to 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 be honest and to be kind of just you know to to show people like who I am as an artist and people kind of accept it you know mm -hmm. or gravitate towards it. Sure, but I mean, okay, so perks of being a sunflower it has over you know five point seven ish million plays <laughs> i mean tell me about that that's crazy like what was the you know you put the record out like how did what was this how did the success of that song build like did you see that kind of happening quickly like tell me about that i think that it was i mean it, i almost didn't put that song out because that was the story behind that song is basically i had just gotten a new bass it was like a hoffner violin bass that i at the time, I was going through a big Beatles phase. And I was like, oh, I got to get a McCartney bass. And so I, sure. <laughs> which, you know, you have to. So I got, I got the bass and that was like the first bass line I played on it. It was just the, the bass line for Perks. So I recorded it and I added drums to it and I kind of just like left it as is. And then I think in the shower, I was, I usually like sing in the shower just to come up with random melodies. And I like sang the melody that ended up being Perks get out of the shower, record the vocals. The song gets, I, I made that song in total, maybe like two hours or so. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just super, cause that, there was no pressure at the time. You know, it was just kind of like, almost like I'm, I'm just testing this gear out. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I saw that song. And uh, even the lyrics, it's just very like stream of conscious. I think I freestyled most, most of it. It was just, it was just all very spur of the moment. And uh and then I just forgot about the song. Like I finished it and I forgot about it. And when I was finishing up, kind of putting the album together, my girlfriend was like, well, what about that one that you showed me that one time? I was like, I really like that one. I was like, I love, I love that song. And I was like, ah, okay, I guess like, sure. Like I'll, I'll include <laughs> it on the album. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, at the time I, I was doing these, uh, little videos in my apartment for each song, just to kind of promote each song. Uh, I recorded this little video of me like, sitting on a couch or like playing Xbox or something or like playing guitar. I don't, it, it was just something really like dumb. <laughs> it was just like me <laughs> singing along to the song. And I put it on Twitter and I, I think I went out to dinner. And by the time I got back, I checked my Twitter and it was just like, the responses were kind of crazy. It was just like, thousands and thousands of of likes and it, I, I, it was just kind of like what's happening right now right like, why like, why <laughs> and, did i log uh, into the right account <laughs> yeah yeah it was just like it was so strange to me because i you know a lot of times you'll you can have expectations for things to kind of uh in accordance to how much work you put into it mm -hmm. you know if you spend an uh you know, three years on a song, by the time you put it out, you, you know, whether conscious or not, you have a certain amount of expectations or at least hope for, you know, ho I hope people will recognize the work that went into this. And the, and I think the opposite is the same, whereas like I, you barely put any time into something, you kind of don't expect much, you know? So it was very much a surprise to me that people were, reacting to the song the way they did um so yeah and, and i still i still don't really get it to be totally <laughs> honest with you i still don't get it because you know i don't know i i know that some of 
my favorite songs, I'll talk to artists and I'll just be like, oh, I love this song. And they'll be like, really? That one? Right. Okay. You know? Um, and that's kind of how I feel about that song. It's like, I think that song is a very uh, important song for me because it was, you know, it's a clear marker of where I was at that time as, as far as just like, you know, being comfortable enough to sing on a song, which mm -hmm. was like a huge deal to me back then. Sure. Um, and uh, I think that might have been the first time I played bass on a song, you know, just because I had wow. gotten that 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 violin bass. And uh, so it's special to me in that regard, because it's such a clear reflection of where I was at the time, you know, when mm -hmm. I put it out and when I made the song. And so I think, yeah, it's nice. It's it's still really nice to have people still to this day. I mean, that was, I put that song on four years ago, almost, and still to this day, people will like, like, yeah, I love that. That's my favorite song from you. It's like, yeah. okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> sure. very much. <laughs> How, were, you out, were you playing live at this point? Or were you out um, doing shows like in New York or anything? Um, not really, because I still, I mean, like I, I mentioned before about the kind of these skills that I was learning kind of on the job. Mm -hmm. uh, singing live and playing guitar live is, I was not ready for that. That was still okay. yet to be, <laughs> you know, that was a skill yet to be attained. And so okay. I was still working on that. You know, I was still working on getting comfortable enough with my voice because it's very different to sing on a song and have, you know, infinite amount of takes to, sure. to get it right. And then tuning the hell out of it if you want to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to going out and performing it live. And at the time, I was just not ready. So I had no uh, desire to even perform live. Okay. I was, I was, I was genuinely scared to perform live at the time. Uh, and uh, so this was 2017, like early, yeah, so late 2017. And I put that album out and I, immediately went on tour as a drummer for a band called overcoats um, oh, okay i've heard of that band actually i think yeah they're great and uh they 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 found out about me through a friend or something who mentioned that i had done music direction and you know drumming and whatnot for someone else that they knew and mm -hmm. uh so anyway they called me and i did an audition and they were about to go on this huge u.s tour like cross-country tour and at the time I needed a job. So I was just like, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. You know, let's, let's do it. And so I went on tour. I was their touring drummer for, I was their touring drummer and MD for about two and a half years. Wow. And it was through that tour, like seeing them perform live every night and, you know, being so close to, to, to that, to, to live performance, live singing that I started slowly gaining confidence, you know, um mm -hmm. and it became you know realistic for me to think well maybe i can maybe maybe i can do it you know maybe i'll give this shot once <laughs> when uh when i'm done with this and and that's what happened i mean i think uh late 2018 i went on my first little run of shows as soft glass and uh i mean it was crazy i'm i'm i get nervous just thinking about it right now just because <laughs> i'm still not <laughs> <laughs> like i'm already kind of shaking the idea of performing live it's still crazy to me okay um, but uh but it was great i mean it was just incredible to 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 take on that challenge of something i wasn't comfortable with at all you know mm -hmm. um and yeah i mean slowly it gets easier over sure. time you, the more you do it but yeah well you and then you well you put out a record last year stunned Tell me about that. Like, where were you, um, like, you know, the beginning of 2020? I'm not sure what month you released a record, but obviously the world shut down in 2020. So, like, tell me about yeah. where you were prior to COVID and when that ha hit, like, how did that affect you? Yeah, I mean, after I had done that run of shows for uh, Orange Earth, I immediately started working on new music. And it. I thought that I could make an album in a year which was the pace that i was going at for a while you know i was putting out music every year i was putting out a project every year up until that point basically and so mm -hmm. to to me i thought okay now i'll just like work on a project and put it out next year and and you know it was just a 
creatively speaking, it was just a really tough year. I had really bad writer's block. I had just, I went through like the most intense, uh, the most intense period of my life as far as doubting myself creatively. Mm-hmm. I, did, I didn't like anything that I made. And so that that I that plan of putting out an album in a year ended up taking like two and a half years. And so eventually I broke out of that. And what came out of that was the music for Stunned. And so I felt really excited about that music. And I thought that I was ready to perform it. And mm-hmm. I put together this tour for it. Uh, that was going to be my first headlining tour. Uh, just like cross-country headlining tour like up the west coast like up the east coast midwest uh and i put the album out i'm rehearsing for the shows and then the covid stuff happens oh my god and gosh. like it all gets canceled and uh and it is i mean it obviously like everyone in the world was affected by this so i can't sure. even you know i can't even compare but at the time it was it was tough because, you know, I, I finally felt ready to take that next step as a performer, as an artist. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, I think I ended up doing two shows in Texas, was, which was like this like little mini run before the actual tour was going to start. And uh, I felt good. I had, you know, there were two good shows and I, I felt confident in my band. And, mm-hmm. and then it just, you know, they got canceled. Oh, my. But, but, the, but the album itself stunned. I think it still it means a lot to me because it represents this like very transitionary period in my life where I actually moved at the end of 2019. I moved away from New York and moved back down to South Florida, um, which was gonna it was gonna be this like in between period where I would get ready to tour, then I would do the tour, and then I was gonna move to LA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then obviously the tour didn't happen, and I ended up staying in South Florida um because moving you know yeah. during covid is just probably not the do greatest it. idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um but yeah so that's that's done and i think i i'm you know i think as time passes i i realize how much uh how strong that period of my life was thematically for me because that music represents that time almost perfectly where it's like I, I have no idea what is going to happen. You know, I'm kind of in between these two eras of my life. And at the time I thought it was, oh, this is like post, you know, New York, pre-LA. But really what it ended up, ended up being was, you know, post regular life, like pre-COVID, you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's stunned. Wow. Well, with that, like, where do you find the time to produce a record that's good that's like up for a grammy this year too like tell me about that, that whole story so that was because basically because of covid happening i ended up staying here in south florida with my parents and uh my dad had recorded a live album in tokyo in 2019 and the plan was to have it be this kind of a this hybrid uh concept of a live album with post-production and kind of like studio production added uh, afterwards in post Mm -hmm. and when COVID happened you know all the studios shut down and we he was kind of lost in that sense of like well what are we supposed to do now we have we had this plan of releasing this project now how are we supposed to record you know, all of the stuff and posts that we had planned. And I happened to be home because I wasn't on tour. And I was like, well, dad, like, maybe I can help. Maybe I can, you know, help with this post-production stuff. Um, maybe we can just record all of it here at home. Mm-hmm. And that's what we did. We just, uh, we mic'd up his piano here at home. We, you know, recorded like all of the, percussion stuff like here in in his like small studio upstairs and just kind of it was very gorilla like you know diy which is really cool to work on something with my dad that way because that's how i was used to working you know working Mm -hmm. out of my apartment and 
my dad was used to working out of his studio and it was cool for our worlds to kind of meet in that way where it was like i was like let me show you what i've been up to you know sure, like let me, sure. um and so that's how it happened and it, and it and it was a thing where it was like well first like they asked me to help record the piano and then when we did that it was like well could we add some percussion and we record the percussion and then it was like well can we add some synth stuff and then like oh could we actually like edit this song and so slowly i was just kind of given more and more responsibility and tasks and then it turned into just like a full-blown you know engineering job and wow. like post-production and editing job and so that was that by far is the most uh fulfilling experience of my career in my life too just to be able to work on something with my dad and feel you know that imposter syndrome that I had been battling like my whole life like mm -hmm. I you know I, I can't really feel like an imposter you know after working with my dad you know right. at that level sure um, and being nominated for a Grammy I mean I didn't realize that, that was your dad's record that you worked on like when I was when I was researching it that's so rad so was this his first grammy nomination or is he had or he had been up for grammys prior he's he's been up for a few um this is his first one in a while i think the last one was in like the mid 2000s or so but i think he, he's won a maybe two I'm not sure but wow. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah so he but, has um, a couple <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean wow to, to 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 be up for best Latin jazz album of the year, like that's a huge a huge thing, and and now you get to be a part of it, and it, unfortunately, it's going to be what like virtual this year, I think. Yeah, it's going to be virtual, but I think again, like I think the Grammy thing is uh, it's special because we did it together. I don't think sure. either of us, are, you know, I don't think we necessarily you know, feel like the Grammy like validates our work in any way, but it's cool to, to see something that we did together, like, you know, at home be recognized at that level, you of know? Of course, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited, we're happy. I think it's just a, it's one of those things where when I was a teenager or like when I was a kid in my high school jazz band, someone were to tell me like, oh, you're gonna work on, a, on an album with your dad. I would, I would just be like, First of all, I wouldn't believe it. But second of all, if I did believe it, I would think that I would be playing drums, you know, right. on an album with him or something. Mm -hmm. And so it's just really cool how life just has these weird twists and turns. And ultimately, you know, you, you can't you can't achieve your dreams, maybe like in not the most direct way, but mm -hmm. this like alternative version of your dreams sure you know? <laughs> sure i love that that's so awesome that you're able to to work with your dad on that album and of course the recognition it's getting is also amazing and you just released another you you released a new song last month cyclone yeah Tell me about that one yeah that was uh at, you know after the stun tour didn't happen i kind of immediately and after the the album with my dad i immediately shifted gears to work on new music and i had these songs in the works for a while and uh for whatever reason i just felt extremely inspired uh you know after working on that project with my with my dad i mean for like obvious reasons not for whatever reason <laughs> for right, obvious right. reasons sure. i was very inspired after working on that album and so uh, i started working on these songs that I had this, you know, vague idea of kind of what I wanted to write about, but uh, it all kind of made itself very clear to me. And it, was, and it was just spending time at home with my parents for the first time as an adult was a very jarring experience for me. It was mm -hmm. kind of like the first time that I felt, you know, the passage of time and how it relates to my relationship with them and my relationship with myself, you know, and just getting older and seeing my parents get older. And so all these things thematically were very fresh and very, uh, you know, they they were kind of this uh, this gravity that was this force that was constantly on my shoulders. And so it it all happened pretty fast. I started working on Cyclones, you know, last summer I think, and uh, most of the album came together very quickly and. 
yeah, Cyclones is, is basically about that, is about this like period in my life where I'm kind of at odds with where I where I am mentally and how like my relationship with myself is affecting the people around me. And, and yeah, I mean, I think in this journey of trying to, you know, express myself as an artist, I think this new music is probably the most, uh, you know, the most direct I've ever been about kind of what's on my mind and being very specific about what I'm feeling at this point in my life. Because mm -hmm. I think in the past, maybe with with Orange Earth and even with Stunned, I think, you know, it's it's all viewed through very, uh, through this, like, through a filter, through almost like a poetic, you know, rose-colored filter of either nostalgia or, you know, uh, I, I just think that this this new music is a lot more direct mm -hmm. in, in sure. where I'm at and, and what I'm feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. And or do you have other tracks ready to go? Like what, what's what's coming up next for you? Uh, I, yeah, I have a song called Prudence and Poise uh, coming out uh, February 5th. And oh, so, awesome. and, and same, it's just kind of like where I'm at mentally. And 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 that song specifically is is more so about how the passage of time I always thought was, you know, guaranteed a certain amount of wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought that, you know, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have things figured out. And then I turn 30 and then I didn't have anything figured out, <laughs> you know, Funny how that works. <laughs> I, yeah. I had less things figured out. I had less <laughs> answers than I had when I was 23. And so, and it's kind of about that, about how, you know, coming to terms with that, that you're not necessarily guaranteed answers, you know, as time passes and um, that can suck. It yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah i think yeah it's just coming to terms with that Very and so cool. i think yeah that's kind of what that thematically that's what this next album is about just kind of time and how how much of a trip it is yeah that's i mean exactly and, and all we have right now is time to sit and dwell on these things because nobody can right. go outside and do much of anything right um right. so you do have you have a record coming out or potentially in the near yeah. future i think okay right on yeah i That's think uh i think i can say i mean it, it i don't know maybe i'll get in trouble for things but i i'm <laughs> it's gonna come out <laughs> it's gonna come out mid-march oh awesome and, man. Um, very cool yeah that is super exciting and then what about like videos or anything that you do any music videos yeah and of course it's like it's very tricky right now because of mm -hmm. covid and being as careful as possible and you know just making sure that you're not ever putting anyone at risk mm -hmm. because of because you want to shoot a video, you know. Right. Um, so yeah, but I, you know, just trying to do things with as little bit of resources as possible, and just trying to convey visually whatever it is the song is about in in a way that's, you know, it's it's tough to have COVID kind of dictate your art right. and dictate your output. It's not a fun thing at all, but obviously like we have to we this is the, the world we live in we have to be very careful we have to be responsible and so but yeah long story short yes th there will be very videos cool. <laughs> very cool i can't wait to see them and thank you so much for doing this i really appreciate it thank you man honestly i'm i'm so honored and i'm very grateful to be a part of this but also very grateful for you to like just to exist because this is <laughs> Your show is like, dude. That means so, so much to me. That means so important much to, me. to like to me and to to I'm sure so many other listeners who, you know, like are just fans of not only music but just like artists and the, the story behind every artist. So I I still speaking of uh, you know, feeling unworthy. I still feel very weird about doing this because no man, you know, this is like <laughs> amazing to me. No, this is awesome, dude. I really appreciate you. And I appreciate all the kind words, man. Like, thank you so much. Um, course, and dude. I love your records and I can't wait to hear the new stuff coming out. And once this is all gone and you know, everyone could be around everybody. I can't wait to see you live and do this in person sometime. Thanks, man. I would love that. Yeah, That'd be amazing. that would be okay. So well, Thank you so much. And I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have yeah. any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, I think 
I think just listen to as many different things as possible. I think that it's important for artists to develop an identity that they are confident in and that truly represents every part of them. Because I do think that sometimes artists can feel pressured to, you know, fit in a certain mold, whether it's a genre or a look or a sound or whatever. But I do think it's, I think everyone has something to say. And it's just allowing yourself to consume as many different types of music and many different, you know, forms of this of this art to be able to express yourself in as genuine a way as possible. So yeah, just listen to a bunch of music. Bring it back,